Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest. I am coming to you today from the beautiful island of Aruba in the Caribbean Ocean off the coast of Venezuela. I am here visiting a friend, my boyfriend, who is Dutch and we have been unable to see each other for 10 months because of the 2020 pandemic and we found a place where we were both allowed to enter the country. So here I am and I'm excited because I did research and there are definitely colors within this natural environment that I'm going to be able to forage and extract to do some dyeing while I'm here. Swamp, but we're really glad to have you back. Hope you have a, a great flight. Just the uh, typical reminders, have to ask that uh, you uh, keep your mask on for the duration of the flight. Uh, over your nose and your mouth. Uh, that's something if we have a problem with uh, at the gate or while we're taxiing, we will have to come back to the gate for it. So we do appreciate your uh, cooperation. As you might be able to see, we do have palm trees, but these are planted for sure. But behind me is a natural reserve and it is all cactus. And it is actually an arid environment here in Aruba. And so I'm going to be looking for some very specific plants that are found here. Some are indigenous, some are not. Some are planted here to make beautiful gardens. And today I'm going to be foraging within my own garden because we have one color that is a beautiful option if you are living in a warm climate and that is the bougainvillea plant and we have one or two of them in the garden where we're staying so we're gonna go ahead today and start collecting the bougainvillea flowers but not from the plant itself but from the ground as they fall I'll be collecting them over the course of probably several days and then I will have enough to make a pot of bougainvillea dye.
so I'm out on I think day three um, just every morning I get up and I look at the various bougainvillea that I have in my garden I have various shades even a yellow one and a bright red one I am just collecting whatever I find bits and pieces on the ground what I'm going to do today is a process where I separate the petals and I'm going to mash them or grind them with a mortar and pestle that we found <laughs> sort of whatever we can find in the garden and I'm going to try to make extract the color that way I did make an attempt uh, to just throw them into a pot and heat them up and actually that destroyed the color so after a little bit of research um, it looks like I need to pull the color very gently and softly through a grinding process so we're gonna try that today so join me as we uh, see if we can make some color that way so now that I've collected up my petals from the ground you'll notice that bougainvillea comes in a three prong formation for the flowers and so the first thing I need to do is separate the leaves and then I'll just discard these and separate them into their threes and I will go through this and slowly work on removing these pieces and making them into individual flower petals like that. Okay, the first process that I'm going to go through is I'm going to start mashing the flowers that I've separated with water to extract the pink color. I'm just going to do it very slowly at first, then just enough water to maybe half the volume of, of plants. And the first thing is I'm going to start tearing them to extract what I can with my hands first. by ripping it I'm giving it more surface area for the color to be able to come out and as you can see I'm starting to get a pretty decent pink dye out of it and I'm going to move to a rock now because I don't have a mortar and pestle with me <laughs> to try to mash it a little bit more so I will work on doing this for a little while so I can get a nice deep pink color out of the flower petals. been changing ever changing we have rain we have sun we've got it all in every one day these winds trade winds are pretty remarkable it keeps things cool it's quite hot here I think it's always in the 80s kind of all day all night pretty high humidity this time of year it is November almost December so although it's not in the hurricane belt it does get the remnants of that weather pattern that's to the north of here but I'm going to take advantage of the fact that there is quite a bit of sun and besides extracting from a crush process and a very slow heat on the stove, I am also going to crush these uh, and leave them in this pot with water, this glass jar. And we'll see if the sun won't bring us some brighter, deeper colors as well. So I haven't tried a sun dye yet, sun tea. So it'll be kind of fun to use it here to see what I get. So. We'll have two different extraction processes here and all with bougainvillea. 
And as you can kind of see in this jar, I'm just, like I said, collecting the different ones that I find on the ground. So I have sort of like a salmon color and then a very vibrant pink color. So we'll see what we get. So it's been about three days um, since I put some sun tea out for the bougainvillea. It seems like it kept its color of the dye itself still that pinkish color. But interestingly enough, the same thing happened as when I heated it on the stove and that is that the color significantly changed and dulled way out. I'm gonna flip it around and show you. Hopefully you can see a little bit. It has a pinkish hue to it, but practically not. I mean, it really is much more sort of a taupe color maybe. And you can see that I have doggy neighbors that are very enthusiastic. <laughs> so something that I did because I was curious is whether or not the heat was actually causing it to change, which is a common occurrence. Um, is that I decided to make another sun tea, but I left the top open on the glass holder and I didn't cover it so that it could, you know, have a little bit of air passing through it and not get quite as hot from the sun. I also am not leaving it out as long, so it's only been in for, uh, I think this is, would be the third day, um, but it hasn't been out for long today. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like because I think this actually retained its pink color or at least transferred its pink color onto some of the textile. So let's take a look together at that. So you can see that I have a few pieces here and wow, I mean, yeah, that is definitely pink. So I'm going to make the conclusion that for bougainvillea, yeah, that is definitely pink. For bougainvillea, you are going to want to avoid having it get too warm and um, really do almost like a cold brew on it. You saw the process by which I squeezed out the dye from the bougainvillea just using cold water and crushing it and mashing it. And then all I did was put the uh, textiles into that mixture uh, with the bougainvillea petals left in the mash and like I said this one that I am just pulling out is two days in the Sun the other one was like I think more like four days in the Sun and it had the top on and and it went sort of that I don't know off-white tan taupe color which isn't bad it's just not what you would expect from that vibrant 
beautiful pink of the Bougainvillea petal. And it just goes to show you that um, you just never know what the color is going to bring to you. And often the color is not what you visually see from the dye matter itself. So I'm going to wring the rest of this out, hang it to dry, and we're gonna call it a day on Bougainvillea. So here are my last samples of the Bougainvillea. And to be quite honest with you, <laughs> I'm barely getting any pink at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these down and I'm going to make a determination that in fact, the bougainvillea is 100% affected by heat and not in a good way, unless you want a very neutral color. I do have some shades of very light pink. I'm not entirely convinced that these wouldn't wash out um, after I pulled them from the water that I showed you or the dye that I showed you it looks so vivid and honestly now the most vivid ones look just sort of like a very pale pink I don't even know if you can really oops you can really see I mean they're slightly pink but not much of a pink so my sort of take is that bougainvillea is pretty sensitive and ever-changing and so I would recommend that you're cautious with what you use Bougainvillea with. It was a good test. It's always good to try new things but it might not be one that I would choose to work with again. I think maybe what I would try next time is, if I were to try it again, would be with perhaps an alum and a tannin mordant. I think it might need a little more bond encouragement not that that's going to work but it's worth a try once i stacked these up they look a little pinker than what they looked on their own but that just might be a refraction situation going on between the different textiles definitely has a pink hue it's just not very strong it's a very subtle pink We will put these in with the samples that we have and we will move on to our next dye material. And that is going to be aloe vera. So on Color Quest next, let's go ahead and chop up some aloe vera and see if we can get two different kinds of dye colors. And one is going to be with a shift that we're going to do with soda ash. Let's go see what we can find with aloe vera. <laughs> 